Backpropagation gives a way to find the weights of the network layer by layer starting from the output layer. As it solves one layer after the other, we can understand backpropagation if we can understand how weights are updated in one layer. To understand how it works, let's take a single node in the nth layer of the neural network and call it J. In a fully connected network, this neuron is connected with all nodes in the immediate input layer, that is the layer n-1, and the immediate output layer n-1. Let's assume there are C nodes in layer n-1, B nodes in layer n, and A nodes in n-1 layer. The nodes in the layer n-1 are connected to the layer n through the weight matrix Wn, and nodes in layer n are connected to the layer n-1 through weight matrix Wn plus 1. Also, let boldface Xn minus 1 represent all nodes in layer n minus 1, Xn nodes in layer n, and Xn plus 1 nodes in layer n plus 1. Let superscript of elements in weight matrix W represent the element location and subscript the layer number. With this notation, to get the input that goes into node J will be the outputs of nodes in layer n minus 1 multiplied by the jth row of the weight matrix Wn. When we take node j, the input to that is vector wj into vector xn minus 1. The result is not a vector, it is a single value. Mathematically, this multiplication is known as vector by vector inner product. Let's say there is an error term capital E that represents the output error of the whole system. It is not only related to this node j, but the entire neural network. One quantity that we are interested in here is how much this error changes if we change the input, that is wj into xn minus 1, by a delta amount. That means we are interested in the derivative of E with respect to the weighted sum of the inputs to neuron j. In backpropagation, we are trying to solve the system layer by layer. Let's assume we know the derivatives of error E in the next layer, that is layer n plus 1. To find the derivatives with respect to the inputs to node j in layer n, we somehow have to associate this derivative to the derivatives of the next layer n plus 1. As the contribution to the error from the node j has to propagate to the output through its connections to the next layer, that is layer n plus 1, the error should be a function of values we get in the next layer. This means we can use the chain rule in differentiation to express the derivatives as a sum of derivatives in the next layer. So we can represent the derivative of E with respect to the inputs to not J in the nth layer as the derivative of error E with respect to the derivative of the first node in the next layer into derivative of that output in the next layer with respect to the inputs to node j, the second quantity. Likewise, we can write this with respect to all nodes in the layer n plus 1. As there are a nodes in the layer n plus 1, the last term will be the derivative of error with respect to the output of the last node in the n plus 1 layer. And the derivative of the output of that node with respect to the inputs to the node j. Here on the left hand side, we have the partial derivative of the error with respect to the inputs to neuron j. On the right hand side, we expanded this in terms of the partial derivatives of the outputs in the next layer, that is the layer n plus 1. Effectively, what we have done is writing the derivative of error with respect to the nth layer variables in terms of the derivatives in the next layer. The idea is to express the derivative like this, assuming we know the derivatives of the next layer so we can solve this layer by layer starting from the last layer. We can further simplify this equation. We know that any node in layer n plus 1 takes in all outputs of the nth layer that is xn multiplied by the corresponding row of the weight matrix w n plus 1 and send that through an activation function. With the rules of differentiation, each term can be written as derivative of activation function multiplied by the derivative of the input to the output node wn plus 1 xn. In this vector by vector multiplication, 
the only value that depends on w and j x n plus or minus 1 is the value corresponding to jth column. Let's see how this simplification comes. Let's look at the weight matrix w n plus 1. If you look at the first output at the top, you can see it is a result of the node, nodes of the nth layer multiplied by corresponding weights. This is equal to the first row of w n plus 1 multiplied by vector xn. Let's consider the derivative of the output of first node in layer n plus 1 as an example. Here you can write it as a summation of derivatives like in this equation. When you differentiate individual terms with respect to w and j x n minus 1, all other terms except the term corresponding to node j become 0. This is because you are differentiating with respect to the output coming to layer n plus 1 from node j. However, the other terms in the summation do not depend on node j. They are propagating through other nodes in the nth layer. As a result, we can write the derivative of the error at node j as a summation of error derivatives at layer n plus 1. That is dabba e upon dabba x n plus 1 multiplied by some other parameters corresponding to layer n plus 1. We can simplify this equation further. The derivative of the error together with the activation function's derivative at layer n plus 1 can be called the new variable delta n plus 1. Because w n plus 1 is a constant, you can take that out of the derivative. Next, we can write x n in terms of the previous layer outputs multiplied by the weights and activation function applied. Looking at this equation, we can see that the derivative part is common for all the terms in the summation. So we can take that part out. The remaining part we can write as a row vector of weights multiplied by a column vector of delta n plus 1. Let's try to represent this equation with matrix notation. The equation we have now is only for node j located somewhere in the layer n. If you represent this for all the nodes, the set of weights corresponding to each node stacks together forming a matrix. Looking at our previous definition for w n plus 1, we can see that this matrix will be equal to the transpose of w n plus 1. The dimensions of w n plus 1 is a by b and its transpose should be a b by a matrix. The delta n plus 1 vector doesn't depend on the node and it is an incremental error passed from the next layer n plus 1. For every node in layer n, delta n plus 1 is a common term. Therefore, it stays as a column vector of size a. The multiplication of these two terms produces a vector of size b. Then each of these terms need to be multiplied by the derivative term f dash w n j x n minus 1. This element-wise multiplication is called Hadamard product, which can be represented with this symbol. As the final term, what we get is a row vector of size b corresponding to each node in layer n. Now we have an equation to calculate the derivative of the error with respect to w n x n minus 1. However, when updating the weights using gradient descent, we need the derivative of the error with respect to weight w and jk itself. Let gamma be the learning rate, which is a small constant. To understand how gradient descent works, please see our lesson on that. Previous derivative can be easily modified to find the derivative of the error with respect to w and jk by applying the chain rule. It adds an additional term dabba w and j x n minus 1 upon dabba w and j k which simplifies to x n minus 1 j k as it is a quantity that doesn't vary with w and j k. Let's summarize how backpropagation works. If we consider an arbitrary node j in layer n, we are targeting in solving for its incoming weights w and j k. In order to do that, when we use gradient descent, we are interested in finding the derivatives of the error with respect to those incoming weights, that is dabba e upon dabba w and j k. We saw that this derivative depends on a variable delta n plus 1,
which can be regarded as the component of the error propagating backwards from the next layer. If we consider layer n plus 1, we can show that delta n plus 1 depends on delta n plus 2 and so forth. With this understanding, what we should know now is what is the derivative if n plus 1 is the last layer or the output layer of the network. In the output layer, we can define the error E as half of xp i minus xt i squared, where xp is the prediction and xt is the actual value. This is same as the definition of mean square error. In the definition, we have introduced half in order to get rid of the multiplication factor by 2 when expression is differentiated. You can see as a result, the derivative of this error term then becomes xp minus xt into dabba xp upon dabba w n plus 1 xn. Further simplifying this term, like we did earlier, we get an expression for the derivative of the error as xp minus xt into f dash w n plus 1 xn in the output layer. This is delta n plus 1 when n plus 1 is the output layer. Starting from this point, we can propagate backwards to update the weights according to the general backpropagation equation and gradient descent as given in these equations.